Hey everybody, today Rado runs through PAX Premier 2nd Edition, but before I begin, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. And again, I'm not Rado, I'm Shay Parker. If you don't know who I am or why I'm here, please check out Rado's April Roundup video because he goes over all of that. Now, let us talk about PAX Premier. I am in 19th century Afghanistan and I am an Afghani uh, tribal leader. And I'm trying to rebuild my country after the fall of the Durrani Empire. To do that, I have the help of a couple of other big political factions, namely the Russians, I've got the British, and I've also got the Afghan military leaders as well. So at its heart, this is a tableau building game. I've got these cards on the top here. This is the market. I'm going to be taking actions, buying these cards, playing them into my, uh, into my court, and these cards will let me uh, establish control over the board, utilizing the military units of those three factions. So the blue player is currently loyal to Russia, which means whenever I'm adding troops as blue, I'm going to be putting down Russian army troops, building Russian roads. But and it's important to note that the blue player, I'm not Russia. I'm not playing as Russia. In fact, I'm only loyal to Russia right now. But I could change that uh, over the course of the game if I find it advantageous. And that is a big part of this game because you are trying to establish dominance with these three factions, but only if you're the most influential. See, there are a number of cards in this deck that are called dominance cards. And when they come up, we will have the opportunity to buy them or if they get to the end of the track, then they'll just trigger automatically. And when those happen, you're going to check to see if any of these three factions are dominant. Uh, if any of them have four or more uh, blocks on the board than any other faction. And if they do, whoever is most uh, influential amongst that faction is going to get a ton of points. But uh, if the, another player is also loyal to that faction, maybe they're a little less influential, they're going to get a couple of points. But here's the thing. If they're not loyal, they're not going to get anything. And that's a big deal because... During this game, if at any point any one player has four or more points than anybody else, they immediately win the game. However, if that doesn't happen, if you're neck and neck through most of the game, you'll just sort of play out into the last dominance check, and then once that happens, you'll see who has the highest score. Uh, but we're going to see how that happens, because I think that this is going to be a tight game. Now, I'm set up for a two-player game. I have the blue player on uh, the left. That is going to be representing my left brain. And the red player on the right is going to be my right brain. So I think it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. And with that in mind, let's get started. I, at the beginning of the game, have two very basic actions that I can do. And on your turn, you, you do two actions. And if you have the ability, some free actions, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start off by looking at the uh, market in front of me. The, a lot of the game is played using these cards. And... When I buy them uh, and then eventually play them into my court, they're going to trigger a few things. There's some actions in the top right that'll just happen as soon as I play them. And there's some actions in the bottom, which I can trigger later. Uh, so uh, this first one uh, seems pretty good. This uh, Transcaspia, like I said, it's got uh, some actions. This specifically allows me to place uh, some of my tribes. I'm going to place them on top of the card. Um, they're acting as spies. And later on, if um, when uh, red plays uh, some of their cards, um, they these spies can maybe move over to their side and maybe assassinate some cards. Um, so getting these out is, is going to be good for that. Um, but when I grab it, I don't actually place it right away. I put it into my hand. So that's one of my actions and I can play uh, another action, which could be to play the card if I want to, um, or it could be to buy another card if I want to. So let's say, yeah, let's say I want to get this Harat card. Um, if I were to get this, then it would let me put down three roads uh, immediately as soon as I play it. Um, but in order to do that, I need to buy it. Now I know that this costs two, uh, two rupees because um, it's in the two column. So the way that I buy it is by putting coin down on each of the spaces uh, before it. So I'm going to take that card, put it in my hand. Now that's the end of my turn. I've uh, done my two actions. I don't have any cards, so I can't do any of the potential free actions. Um, so at the end of the round, all of the cards slide down 
and we replace them with some new ones. Um, now, uh, the first event card has come up. There are a number of these throughout the game, and these are interesting because uh, they don't just happen. You know, uh, sometimes event cards in games come up and they just happen. Now, this is a little different. This has two sides. One, if I purchase it, I'll have this uh, bottom ability, which coalitions require only two more blocks in order to be dominant during the next dominance check. That's going to be useful if I think it's going to be really tight between multiple factions. Or if I let it go all the way to the end of the row and then it eventually gets discarded, uh, this will trigger the top side, uh, which will remove all tribes and armies in Punjab, in the Punjab region. Uh, so that's going to come up later. Um, but for now, I'm going to move it over to my right brain. And right brain is looking at a few things. Uh, immediately, I think this British Regulars is going to be a good card for me because it is a British Patriot from the British Stripe in the middle. It also puts down some uh, British soldiers. Um, so right brain, not going to think about it too hard. Just going to take this card. At, you buy it as one action, and then I'm going to play it as my second action. So I put it down into my court, and immediately those two uh, British soldiers um, get played. Now this card is a Kandahar card, which means that those soldiers are going to be placed in the Kandahar region. Uh, Kandahar being right here. And uh, later on, I might be able to use these uh, bottom abilities, but I'm out of actions for now, so that is my entire turn. I haven't spent any money, which is uh, good for, for right brain me. Um, and so these cards will all get moved forward, get another card out, and switch it over to left brain. All right, uh, so I, I'm actually happy because right brain didn't grab this, uh, this zero card. Now, there wasn't a, a really big reason for them to do that. I think the, the Kandahar card made a lot of sense, but uh, now that this is still available, I don't mind picking it up and grabbing that coin. That coin goes back into my supply. Now I have a card, but now I have a bunch of cards and I still haven't done anything. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to take that Harat card that I found earlier. And uh, as it shows on the top right, that lets me play three roads in Harat. Uh, I'm loyal to uh, Russia, so I'm going to take these yellow Russian cards, go to Herat, and now I can place these roads between Herat and any other region. Um, now, I could place uh, this road here, and because it's a yellow road, the, the British uh, soldiers, they're not going to be able to use it. Um, roads are uh, exclusive to their own faction, so I don't need to worry about that. And I might want to move troops over there in the future anyway, so I'm going to uh, do that. Um, so those are my two actions. Again, this game moves pretty quickly like that. Um, so we go into the cleanup and slide everything over. Grab another card. There's another event card. Uh, this one, if it's discarded, it will change the um, the favored suit. Uh, I'll get to that in one second. And if it's purchased, remove all tribes and armies in a single region. Um, and whoever purchases that gets to choose. Now, there's this uh, track right here that I haven't talked about yet. This is the favored suit. There's um, uh, purple, blue, yellow, red. These correspond to different kinds of, the four different colors of cards that are in front of us. And I'll show you uh, how it works right now. So uh, I'm gonna go over to red, my right side, and right brain is looking at Kabul. Uh, I'm going to pay one to buy Kabul. I'm going to put it down immediately. Um, and Kabul, this Kabul card, uh, lets me place one tribe in Kabul. Um, so I have done that, placing one tribe in Kabul. And now that I have a tribe here, I rule Kabul. It's pretty cool. Um, this is going to have a, a number of, uh, of different effects, but uh, one of the big ones is that it is going to let me build uh, units here. Um, it's a little expensive, but uh, it's because uh, purple is the favored suit at the moment. That's almost bad. Um, that means I can get to uh, use this bottom action for free. So move this over here to show you. Um, this is the build action. And if I want to use this, it's going to cost two, four, or six uh, rupees to build units. And I, I'm thinking I want to get some units on the board. So 
I am going to pay that by taking two coins and placing them on the right. Um, and then I get to build a unit uh, in uh, a region that I rule. Since I rule Kabul, I will take one of my British soldiers and put it right there, which feels pretty good. Now, I spent one action to draw the card. I spent one action to play the card, but because the uh, favorite suit is purple, that means that I can use the build as a free action. If I had a bunch of purple cards, I could do a lot of free actions. So it might be useful for me to, to stock up on one type of, uh, of suit and try and keep the favorite suit in that, uh, in that space. But as soon as that moves, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to put it back. So for now, I want to uh, keep that as it is. That's the end of my turn. So I'm going to move that over, keep refreshing, another event card. Um, and let's go back to left brain. Left brain's looking at a few things. Again, there's some more cards. They've got some more, uh, they've got some more coins on them. Now I could get this Kabul card on the left. It would get me that coin right there. But because red owns Kabul, or rules it anyway, if I, if I want to play this, I'm going to need to bribe red player. I need to bribe my right brain, and I want to do that. So I'm going to leave Kabul there. And let's see, you know what? I'm, I'm not loving the fact that right brain has uh, a region and I don't. So I'm looking and I'm seeing Herat. Now, uh, all of the purple cards are going to uh, allow you to place tribes on the board. Um, each suit tends to have things that they do. For example, the red cards, these are pretty much always gonna be putting down uh, units on the board. Sometimes they'll put spies. Um, but the blue cards are always going to put spies on board, uh, or on cards. And the yellow cards, these are usually going to put down roads, which are these sideways blocks, um, or they're, they're going to be leveraged. Leverage means you grab a couple coins from the bank, which is one of the only ways that that can happen. Um, but if that card is ever lost, then you have to pay those, card, those coins back to the bank. Um, so I'm looking at this purple card. Uh, in Herat, because I want to get more tribes out on the board. So I'm going to, again, put two coins there, grab this Herat card, and yeah, might as well, might as well just play it. Um, so put that down. Now, this does a few things. Um, as you can see, this is going to uh, put two of my tribes in Herat, which makes me the ruler of Herat. Um, it also uh, changes the uh, favored suit to purple, but it's already at purple, so um, that's not really going to be uh, anything useful. Um, oh, but this card does have a special ability in the bottom here. Uh, specifically, it says, my spies may double their uh, distance moved when using a move action. Um, I don't have any spies on the board yet, but I have gotten some spy cards, and I think that's going to be uh, pretty useful in, in just a little bit, but for now, but uh, let's see if, if red, uh, if my right brain notices that, I don't think so. Um, so we're moving over, moving these cards down, and we're going out. Now, red's looking at this, it's low on coins. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I want these, these two coins. I don't really know if I, if I care about this card that much, it might be good, um, but I really am just taking this card because I want the coins, so take the card, put it in my hand, and you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another one um, because I want more money. Now, again, purple's still the favorite suit. I could use that build action again to put more units in Kabul. It's not the worst idea. I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. Yeah, you know what, I got this money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend it, I'm gonna spend all of it. Okay, let's be reasonable, but I think putting another soldier in Kabul, not a bad idea but I am gonna to need to build some roads because right now they're kind of stuck where they are. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, again, that was the free action from uh, Kabul. I forgot that uh, Kabul has, a, has an ability too, but I'm not able to, to use it just yet. So I'll, I'll talk about it when, it when it comes up. All right, so bringing out some new cards. Uh, all right, going back to my left brain. Left brain is not liking the situation that we've got here. There's, there's more, there's a lot of British soldiers out. 
My Russian roads aren't doing much of anything for me. So I think it's time to spy a little bit. I'm gonna play that Transcaspia card that I got a while back. This is gonna get me a couple of spies. Um, so I take two of these uh, things. Now they have to go on a Transcaspia card. If my right brain had any Transcaspia cards, I could do that, but uh, they don't. So at the, uh, at the moment they are stuck there. However, um, I can use this move action on the bottom. So now I've used my one action to place this card. I can use my second action to move, um, which if I had any you know, soldiers on the board, I could move the soldiers around. But since I don't, I can move my spies. And these can go all the way over to my opponent's side. Um, and now these cards are, uh, I believe they're, they're held hostage, which means that if, um, if right brain wants to use any of these, then they're gonna have to uh, pay up. They're gonna have to pay a bribe to actually use the actions on this card. Um, and because I have uh, this well-connected um, Herat card, spies may move double. Um, so each spy can move two spaces. And because I've got these, uh, these flags right here, that means uh, the two flags means I can make two movements, each of my things moving two spaces. So I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna go one, two spaces. They've been using this a bunch. I don't want them to, to keep doing it. Um, and I'm gonna take this other one and I'm gonna go onto the Kandahar card. Now, if they wanna use any of these bottom side actions, they're gonna to have to pay up. So I think that's, that's gonna be good for me. Uh, or at the very least, it's going to stop right brain from being able to uh, use any of these actions without ponying up. They're not that rich, so I don't think they'll be able to do it. Um, now, if I had money, I could betray. Um, if I paid two coins, I could take a card where I have spies, for example, uh, either of these two cards, and kill it. Um, there's reasons that I might want to do that. Maybe they're, it's just too good of a card for them. But also, some of these cards, if you uh, can destroy them, you can take them as prizes. This one's going to be good for me because it's a Russian prize. And if I were to kill it, I would take it and place it underneath my loyalty. And that is just giving me a little bit extra loyalty for the British side. I don't want to do that just yet because I don't have any money. But something to keep in mind for the future. Uh, so that is... Uh, the end of the round, I didn't buy anything, um, so we don't move these at all, and we go back over to right brain. Uh, all right, this is not great for me. Um, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But I can't really do anything about it at the moment. I do have uh, that that Persia card that I picked up. This could let me put some spies down. If I get my spies, I can move them over to theirs. We can fight. The trick is the things that let me move are are taken hostage, so I would have to pay to do that. So there's a lot of things that I need to, to keep in mind at that point. So instead, I'm just gonna look at uh, what's in front of me. I think I think I wanna keep putting out soldiers. I don't wanna get this Transcaspia because it's loyal to, to Russia. Uh, I want to I want to stick with the British for now. Um, yeah, this Kandahar is loyal to Afghan, so I don't want that. Um, but ooh, this is what I want. I oh, but I just need a little bit more money. So there's this card that I wasn't looking at before, but now I'll take a look at it because if purchased, I may choose not to pay bribes until the next dominance check. And seeing that we've got these cards that are uh, taken hostage. That's, I think, what I want to do. Now, it costs three, and I only have two coins at the moment. Uh, it's not, that's not ideal. But I can get that coin that I need in uh, a nice and easy way. First off, I'm going to play this Kabul card. That lets me put down a couple of British roads in Kabul. Let's start moving them. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go like this. Um, this is going to be good because it'll maybe let me move my soldiers into Herat, maybe start taking out these tribes. But the big thing is that it's leveraged. This means that I take a couple coins from the bank and add them to mine. Uh, so that is out. Um, there's some other actions on that, but I don't need to do it just yet. Uh, but now I have enough money that I'm going to buy 
this courtly manners card. So I bought it. I don't need to pay bribes until the next dominance check. We don't have a dominance card on the board yet, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm just gonna leave that card right here just as a little reminder. So now um, I could play either, I could use either of these cards uh, without paying the bribes. It also means that I could uh, get a Harat card, one of these, and play uh, Harat cards without paying uh, the bribes for that either. So hopefully, so now, as, as right brain, I'm hoping that dominance check cards don't come up because I want to keep this as long as I can and uh, you make it like use it to the best of my ability. But we'll see if that happens. So it's the end of my turn. Bring it up and going back to left brain. So that is obviously bad. Uh, I put the whole thing of getting uh, you know units over there in order to uh, make them pay for stuff, but that's not really working. It's not helping me. And now they've got roads. So I've got two things I need to worry about. I need to worry about uh, what I should do about this. Maybe I want to kill those cards, but I don't know how useful it's really going to be for me. Or I can think about putting uh, soldiers on the board and actually fighting back. Because right now, uh, if I'm looking at uh, the soldiers or the, the blocks on the board, I can I want to count how many there are because I see three um, three Russian sol three Russian roads, um, but I also see six uh, British uh, British blocks. The reason that's important is because when we're checking dominance, uh, a faction is dominant if they have four more blocks on the board than any other faction, and they're really close. So I think I want to fight that, and uh, I think this is at least going to help a little bit. So I'm gonna take this Transcaspia card. It's free, it's got a couple coins on it, and I get to put down a Russian soldier on Transcaspia. I need to stop covering that up. Um, I also get to place a spy on a Transcaspia card. Um, I'm gonna just put that down right there. Um, so now, one thing that I, I've noticed is I've got Russian loyalty locked down. I've got two Russian patriots they're not even trying, but that doesn't help me unless Russia is dominant. I'm right now. My goal is to stop uh, to stop the British from being dominant, and it's going okay. But I don't know if that's if that's really going to be the best strategy going forward uh, in the future. So I'm starting to keep an eye on what time do I want to switch my allegiance because if. The uh, British can really keep going, keep getting more influence. Well, then it might actually behoove me to switch sides and maybe try and take uh, a victory from uh, out from underneath them. We'll see. So going back to right brain. Uh, now I'm looking at this card because this event card is, since it has reached the end of the market, if no one buys it, it is going to be discarded which means that uh, all tribes and armies in Punjab are going to be uh, destroyed. There are none at the moment. Um, so that's not really a big deal for me. Um, but I do like the bottom side. I took this off too early. See the bottom side, coalitions require only two more blocks in order to be dominant. Now we've seen that Russia is trying to fight back on dominance. So I think that's gonna be a good card for right brain. Right brain's gonna grab it. Again, right brain doesn't think too hard about these things. He's right brain. Um, so I've got that. Uh, and now, and now, uh, uh, the British troops are dominant because it's six to four. So as soon as a dominance check card comes up, I might wanna buy it because if I can grab that pretty quickly, then he might do uh, some good things for me. Now, Let's see what else I want to do. I've got uh, one more action I can do with my turn. I could maybe, ooh, here we go. So I'm going to start moving troops. Uh, I'm going to use my Kandahar ability. Um, those flags, uh, that's what helped um, left brain move his spies onto this card. Um, but it's also going to help me move my soldiers. So I'm going to use this uh, ability. You can only use each uh, card once per turn. So I'm gonna move, I'm just gonna move the one army unit uh, over to Herat because now that they're here, I'm gonna start uh, maybe harassing the, uh, the blue tribes. 
Now, I would have to pay a bribe because this is um, this, this is uh, taken hostage. But because I have that event card that stopped that from happening, um, then I, that means I don't have to do it. So that was a good purchase. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, so I've uh, picked up this card. I've moved. That's my two actions. Let's keep going. Now that uh, it looks like Britain might be dominant, I'm thinking that it might be time to switch sides because it's going to be difficult to keep to, to keep fighting the British on on pure dominance. So I'm starting to think that it might be better for me if I actually switch sides and go to the British side. But I can't just do that right away. I need to gain a point of influence uh, for um, for the British side in order to, to move. Um, so there are a number of ways I can do that. I could uh, play a British Patriot, like this Persia card right here, um, or I can take a prize, uh, like any of these cards that have this um, stripe on the bottom. So this one is specifically a British prize if I can get it. Now, I'm looking at that and saying, that's my card. Why would I kill that? Well, I mean, it might still be useful. However, if I change sides, then my Patriots are all gone. I lose both of them. So it's, it's, a, it's not an easy decision. And for right now, there are no dominance cards in the market. As soon as they come up, that's when I really want to start thinking about it. for now. I think I'm okay. And one of the reasons I think I'm okay is because these Cossacks, and this has an ability, the Irregulars, uh, this is always treated as if it were in the favored suit, which means I can always use this attack action um, as a free action. So I think for now, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I, I see some cards that I want. I definitely, ooh, I definitely want to grab this Herat card because I want to put more units um, in, in Herat. Uh, so I'm going to grab that one. I have to pay one to do that. But what am I going to do here? I need to, I need to get rid of some of these pink blocks. So I know that I can use these, uh, these Cossacks as a free action. So easy enough, I'm going to just take this one soldier that I have and destroy this British road. That puts us at least a little bit closer. In fact, uh, it's now five to four, which means Britain's no longer dominant. Uh, so that's, that's a start. Now, I could uh, use either of these move actions to maybe move this guy over into one of these places, but then they're vulnerable. You know, uh, right now, uh, the British soldier can't get to Transcaspia. So my, my soldier's uh, safe at the moment. I don't know if I want to, to really push that just yet. Um, I picked up a card. I've played this. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just play that, that Herat card. Um, I'm actually running, not running out of space, but my, my court is getting pretty big. And there is actually a, a maximum court size. Uh, it starts off at three cards in your court. But if you have um, uh, purple cards, then your court size increases based on the number of purple stars. This is the, the, uh, the ranking of the card, I believe it's called. Um, so because I have that, uh, that, blue, that two purple star card, um, that means my court size is a max five, so now I'm maxed out. Um, and now I can use uh, this Harat card. And now I'm thinking maybe I want to. Uh, let's see. I could do a number of things. Um, I'm going to pay two, and I can take it, and I can uh, take any card where I have a spy, which is these three, and I can destroy the card. Um, I'm going to destroy Kabul, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. There's two reasons. One, just getting rid of their cards is good. This card is like letting them build uh, easily. I don't like that. But two, whenever you destroy a purple card, um, and because purple cards are always tied to putting down tribes people on the board, uh, if 
it is the last purple card of that location, um, then right, uh, right brain is going to lose their tribes in that location. So even if they had, you know, four tribes there, if I destroy their last Kabul card, all of these tribes go away and vice versa. If I were to destroy the Kabul tribe, they would lose their Kabul card. So I'm going to pay those two coins. I'm going to destroy Kabul. This uh, token goes back on my track um, and Kabul is gone. They've lost Kabul. They are no longer the rulers of Kabul. Now I could take this as an Afghan prize, but that would change me to Afghan loyalty. And right now there are no Afghan troops on the board. So that's not really going to help me that much. Um, so I don't think I want to do that. Uh, I choose not to take that uh, as uh, a prize and they uh, lose the card. Um, so that was my, that was a free action because it was purple, which means, ooh, which means I still have one more action that I could do. Now, I said that I didn't want this Kandahar card, and I don't because it's, a, it's an Afghan patriot, but I do want these, these coins. So I'm going to take that card and put it in my hand. And now we're going to slide everything down as my turn is over. Here we go. All right. So now we've got a dominance card on the board. Dominance card, whether it's discarded or purchased, does the same thing. It re you resolve a dominance check. So as soon as this triggers, I'm going to look at the board and I'm going to see, is any faction dominant? Normally, you need to have four or more uh, blocks on the board than any other faction. But because of uh, this conflict fatigue, you only need two more blocks. And it's pretty close. It's five to four uh, for the British. So moving over to right brain, my goal is now to put the pressure on, make sure I am putting units on the board. I need to put down... Uh, soldiers or I need to put down roads. So I'm looking at what's going to get me the most for that. Um, okay. I see this Kabul card. I'm, I'm no longer the ruler of Kabul, but still good. I get to put down two roads um, just for playing it. And that's that's not bad. I think I, think I might want to do that. I think, I think that's going to be pretty good. Plus, later on, I'll be able to use this taxation ability and that's gonna help me get more money. So I'm gonna take my two coins, I'm gonna put them down, I'm gonna grab this Kabul card. Now I can play this right away. I'm thinking I probably should. I am out of money and my instinct is to maybe grab one of these uh, cards that has all this money on it. But uh, a thing about this game is that when you put a coin on a card, you cannot grab that card this round. It hasn't come up yet, but in this instance, it would be really nice for me to, to grab this Persia card and, and just get all that money. It's also a, a, it's also a British uh, Patriot. That's good for me, but I can't because I grabbed this card first, put those coins down, so that's not an option anymore. So because of that, I'm just gonna put down that Kabul card. Now, uh, this uh, card that was in the center of my court uh, got killed. Um, so everything is going to slide in. Whenever you place a card, you're always putting it on the left or the right side, which just has, you know, uh, it comes into play whenever you're moving spies around. So I'm gonna put this Kabul card on the right side. It immediately allows me to place two uh, roads in Kabul. Let's go there and there. Uh, and now the British are dominant once again. And once my uh, now that my turn is over, this dominance card is getting ever closer. So switching back over to left brain, I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm seeing again a problem. Uh, but it's a problem that I think I can solve. I, I was talking about switching sides before and I think now might be the time to do it. Um, I'm going to take my two coins um, and I'm going to use my Harat's ability of betrayal. And I'm gonna start off, uh, to, so I place, I place those two coins and I'm gonna betray my own card. I'm gonna kill these Cossacks and take it as a British prize. So now that I am loyal to uh, the British Empire, I have to lose my Russian Patriot, but that's okay. 
it wasn't really doing much for me anyway. Um, and now I don't have any qualms about grabbing this Persia card. Uh, this Persia card, which is a British Patriot, because I take that card, put it in my hand, um, and I and now my goal is to become the most influential amongst the British. Because if I can do that, then I'm going to get five points, whereas they are only going to get three. When counting influence, you count one point just for being loyal to them. So whatever your dial is, is set to, you get one point. Uh, if you have any, um, uh, if you have any cards tucked underneath your dial, that's going to be one point for each uh, card. You can also uh, give gifts. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I'm probably going to uh, in a bit. Um, or the Patriots. All of those added up gives you the influence. So let's move over to Right Brain and see how I do on this. Right Brain. All right. So this is an interesting scenario that we were in now because we're both loyal to, to the British and now it's just a race to see who can be the most influential. Right now we're tied. Blue player has uh, the one prize and they're loyal. I have the one um, uh, Patriot and I'm loyal, so we're each at two points. So let's see, and I know that they have one more card in their hand. So the question is, can I trigger this before they do and become more influential at the same time? And I don't think that, that I can. Um, I also have no money, oh no. Okay, that's a problem. I have no money. Um, oof. Now I would love to use the taxation ability um, from Kabul, but because I don't own Kabul, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Um, so instead, I'm just gonna have to pick up cards to get these coins. Hmm. I don't have a lot of great options here. I, I, I want more loyalty. And I think the only way that I can see to, to get it in the future is to go after this Persian, uh, this uh, Persian, um, Patriot. So the way that I do that is I grab the Punjab card. I don't even care what this card is. I'm just doing it for the coin. Put that coin down, then take the coin, place it on Harat, and pick up Persia. I'll be able to play it on the next round. Oh, well. <laughs> See, right brain doesn't think things through as much, is about to, uh, about to realize the mistake that they made. So the end of their turn, this all moves down. And we go over to left brain. Now, a thing that I forgot to do, um, I have three cards in my hand as uh, left brain, and the hand size is two cards. However, um, that is increased based on the blue cards in your hand, your, your, uh, your spy cards, essentially. Um, the same way that purple cards increase your court size, uh, blue cards increase your hand size, but I don't uh, have any blue cards in my court, so I'm gonna have to discard uh, one of these cards. Uh, I would have had to do it last turn, so let's say I did, um, and that's there. Now that I'm back to speed, I am going to take it away as the British. I'm gonna play uh, this Persia card. It is a British Patriot, which means I now have more British loyalty than right brain. Um, I also get to put down uh, a spy in Persia. There are no other Persia cards, so it has to go on the Persia card, uh, the Persia card that I played. And uh, I have enough money, I have just enough money to buy the dominance card. So I'm gonna take this dominance card and do a dominance check. So I'm looking at the board, I'm seeing what is the state of things. We know that Britain, uh, Britain is uh, the dominant power. So they are, uh, so that means we are now needing to check influence. We know that I have three points of influence versus right brain's two, which means as blue player, I get five points and they only get three. I have uh, taken what was originally a fight for Russia against Britain and now just switched it all around. And hey, I guess Britain likes me better. Maybe you should have thought things through, right brain? Um, and with that, I think I'm going to end because I think this is giving you a pretty good idea of, oh, sorry, before I stop, one big thing, as soon as there is a successful dominance check, all of these blocks gets removed. Every single one of them. Um, 
and the board is largely reset, but not completely because my tribes are still left over. I still rule Herat, uh, which means that going forward, I have a bit of an advantage there. However, the board state is very different. I had to throw down a lot of money in order to get uh, that, that dominance check. So right brain going forward would have the opportunity to get some of that money back and you know maybe do a little bit of a counterattack. Maybe at, at this point, uh, maybe they'll switch sides, you know, and and go forward from there. Maybe they'll turn into Afghan uh, loyalty. There's a lot of these Afghan prizes. If they can get some spies here, maybe they can kill those, get some Afghan loyalties, put some of these green tiles on the board. Who knows? But for now, uh, blue, my left brain is in the lead, and these uh, event cards are now discarded. So. I think that's getting, uh, giving you a pretty decent idea of how the game is played. Uh, there are four of these dominance cards in the deck. Um, we only saw one of them, but you'll go through all four unless you know they uh, one player jumps ahead enough that they win the game outright. Um, and there are a few other actions that it didn't quite get to show, like taxation that lets you uh, pull money from people that have the the same. Uh, cards as uh, a region that you own or you can use it to grab money off of the market itself um, or uh, giving gifts which allows you to place your uh, tribes tokens on your dial itself as just direct influence for the factions but for the most part you've gotten a pretty good idea of how Pax Premier Second Edition is played so if you want to hear my final thoughts on it please just click on the uh, little eye in the corner or check uh, the link in the show description below. Um, and that's going to do it for me. So I will see you in the final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one. Bye.